Petite Rooms. It's time I take off this crown, Petite said. She stood in Whiskerhaven Village in front of the stone well. Around her, hay rides paraded down the street. She watched her friends, palace pets and critizens alike, having a grand old time, but Petite was upset. She was eager to remove the crown that was stuck to her head. The way to get the crown off my head must be somewhere in the bucket at the bottom of the well, she said, peering into the circular opening. Petite pulled up the rope that was attached to the bucket, but when she looked inside at first she found nothing. Petite put on her glasses. There's something written inside, she said. There were words carved into the bottom. This isn't an answer to how to get off the crown, she read, reading it over. It's a riddle. But what in Whisker Haven could it possibly mean? I have bark, but do not bite. On a hot day, I give you a cool seat. Sit there now and find what you seek. What barks but does not bite, she asked herself. I don't bark, said Mr. Chow the cat, peeping his head out of his open shop door. But I sure love kibbles. I bark, said Chauncey, the brown puppy with red scarf, and I love kibbles too. Will you bark for me, asked Petite. You want me to bark for you, said Chauncey. Yes, please, said Petite. No problem. Oh, Chauncey said. Off, off, de, off, off. And will you bite? asked Petite. Of course, Chauncey said. But as Chauncey opened her mouth to bite, Petite the pony stopped her. Nay, 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 Petite said. You don't have to bite me. I just wanted to see if you could. Anyone can bite, said Mr. Chow. Good point, Petite said. I hadn't thought of that. I helped. Does that mean I can get some kibbles as a reward? asked Chauncey. Certainly, said Mr. Chow. Come right in. The criticisms disappeared into the shop. I do some of my best thinking in Whisker Woods, said Petite. I'll go there. She trotted down the street and kept going until she found herself in Whisker Woods. There was no one around her. Petite roamed and roamed and roamed. Meow, said a voice. Nice crown. Petite turned. There on a tree clung a sloth. Hi, Miss Sophia, said Petite. Funny running into you here. It's my favourite place to be. Especially on such a hot day, Miss Sophia said. And why is that, Petite asked. The trees make everything so much cooler, said Miss Sophia. Of course, trees make everything cooler and, Petite trailed off, her eyes lit up. And trees are covered in bark, said Petite. I like trees, said Miss Sophia. Miss Sophia, you did it, Petite yelled. You helped me solve my riddle. Tree bark is my favourite kind of bark, said Miss Sophia. I have bark, but do not bite. On a hot day, I give you a cool seat. Sit there now and find what you seek, Petite said. Tree bark is the answer to the riddle. Miss Sophia nodded. It sounds like you'll find what you're looking for, she said. If I can find this tree, then maybe I can find a way to get this crown off, said Petite. It's stuck to my head. Oh no, said Miss Sophia. We'll find it. 
I sure hope so, said Petite. Now, let's look for that tree. She started to trot. Meow, said Miss Sophia, moving only an inch. Miss Sophia, I've got a great idea. Can I interest you in a pony ride? Why? asked Miss Sophia. I'm as fast as lightning. I can keep up. I don't just offer a ride to anyone, said Petite, but I'd love it if you hopped on. Well, then I'd be honoured, said the sloth as she climbed on Petite's back. And away we go, said Petite. Breaking into a gallop, Petite ran through the woods with Miss Sophia on her back. Which tree has our answer? asked Petite. No any good trees to sit on? I'm not sure, said Miss Sophia. Petite looked closely at each tree they passed. I have a feeling that if you and I put our heads together, we'll be able to figure it out, she said. Miss Sophia put her head against Petite's. Meow, she said. Suddenly they heard a sound like laughter echoing in the distance. That sounds a lot like, Petite began to say. Just then she felt a tug on her tail. What in Whisker Haven, she asked, spinning around. Ha ha, said Barnaby Pickles, the brown and white cat and village trickster. I got your tail. Barnaby, said Miss Sophia. That's not... Nice, Petite said. Maybe you can help us, Miss Sophia said. We're looking for a tree. What sort, said Barnaby Pickles. A tree with a great place to sit, said Petite. Do you know where we can find it? Barnaby Pickles nodded as if he was about to say yes, but he said, No, I have absolutely no idea. Deep narrowed her eyes. So you don't know where it is, she asked. Well, I don't not know, Barnaby Crickle said. So you do know, said Miss Sophia. I didn't say that, Barnaby Pickle said with a wink. Tell us, said Petite. Maybe it's over there, the cat said, pointing. He giggled and dashed away. Petite and Miss Sophia walked in the direction that Barnaby Pickles had pointed. But after walking for a long time, they still found nothing but rows of trees with no good places to sit. Boo! Barnaby Pickles yelled, jumping out from behind a tree and scaring the daylights out of them. Ha ha, I got you, he said laughing. Barnaby, please help us, said Petite. Barnaby, Miss Sophia said, I don't think you really know where the tree is. Yes, I do, he said. Miss Sophia shook her head. I wish I could believe you, but... But what? Barnaby Pickles asked. But unless you show us, said Petite, I don't think we can take your word for it. Well, that's crazy. It's right over there, Barnaby Pickles pointed at a tall tree. You said that last time, Miss Sophia said. Yeah, why should we trust you, asked Petite. Because I'm telling you the truth this time, he said. Prove it, said Miss Sophia. Fine, follow me, he said, running off. Petite and Miss Sophia followed him and arrived at the tall tree. Barnaby Pickles knocked on the bark and a swing dropped down from the high leafy branches. Well, I'll be, Petite said, sitting on the swing, a tree with a cool seat. Now what? asked Miss Sophia. Petite looked around. Hmm, I don't know, she said. Barnaby Pickles pushed the swing, sending Petite soaring up and then swooping back down. Barnaby, quit it. 
Barnaby Pickles gave for a swing. Another push. Whoosh! Barnaby, I said, Petite began. She stopped. As the swing rose high, she looked up at the tree branches and caught a glimpse of a piece of paper stuck among the leaves. Wait, Petite said. Keep pushing me. I see something in the tree. Barnaby Pickles gave her another big push and Petite swung up. Whoosh! There's something stuck up here, said Petite. I can climb up and get it down, said Miss Sophia. Miss Sophia slowly climbed the tree, disappeared into the leaves and emerged, holding a tiny scroll of paper in her hands. She crawled back down the tree and handed the paper to Petite, who opened it to find another riddle. To remove the crown once and for all, there's no time to waste, but time to stall. Stall, said Petite, but Jane Hare needs her crown back by sunset. We can't, we just can't wait around. Stall, said Miss Sophia, like a stall in a stable. <gasps> Miss Sophia, you're a genius, said Petite. That's it, the stable. I must go there to find the answer of how to get this crown off and back to Jane Hare. Petite turned to Barnaby Pickles and Miss Sophia. My journey is far from over, but thank you both so much for your help. Good luck, said Miss Sophia. I'll take any luck I can get, said Petite. Bye, Miss Sophia. Bye, Barnaby. Bye, said Miss Sophia. But Barnaby Pickles was nowhere to be seen. Petite trotted towards Whiskerhaven Village. It's finally time to remove this crown, she said.